Welcome to The Right Path. I'm your host, Rida Shah. And today, we'll be talking about a very important topic, something that is, I think, the most integral part of all the illnesses that our society faces, that is anger. Because anger is the driving force behind everything, everything wrong in this world. And it is one of the deadliest sins as well. And in Quran and in Sunnah, we have repeatedly heard and read that anger is the worst of all evils because that is, again, the main component of all the evil that lies in the world. In conversation with Dr. Kaval Kesar, Assalamu alaikum, how are you? Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, and we are talking about a subject if we are in any gathering and we ask, is there someone who is angry today and everyone would be raising their hands. Exactly, so that, that is where we'll start the conversation with that we feel in today's time and age, there's a lot of anger, there's a lot of resentment, there's a lot of animosity being developed within our uh, selves and we see that in young children as well, yeah. they're so angry, everybody's so angry. So if we, if we look into it, why, what do you think is the reason behind all this short-temperedness that we see around the world in today's age? Rita, anger is an honest emotion. Okay. This is something that we have to understand. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is an honest emotion which tells us hey, look, there is something wrong in your life and you need to do something about it. Because a lot of time what is happening is because of the fast-paced life, because of unresolved issues and a lot of challenges coming our way every minute, I would say. And since we are running and running and running and we are not settling down and we are not trying to settle the things which are bugging us, irritating mm -hmm. us, creating problems for us. So this is a call from inside when we are angry, there is a burnout, there is a something that we need to address. Now our problem is since we are not organized in our life, in our structures, so rather than addressing them properly, what we do is we blast out. Yeah. So this is something that we have to see. For example, if you look at certain scenarios where we lose control, like if we are not given any choices, Okay. Um, if we are in any form of danger, it could be physical or emotional, if we are treated unfairly, if uh, sometimes the anger is towards our own self, when we say, oh, I made such a blunder or such a stupid mistake, or if someone is um, not only mistreating us, but misusing us, mm. taking the best from us, or we have violated our own value system. Mm. So there, is, there are so many scenarios and basically what we need to do is understand each one of them rather than just saying, oh, I'm justified in my anger, it's in my genes, it's being transferred in our family and yeah, sometimes we, we in yeah. our family, so, so it, it's natural for us mm, to be, but it's not natural. No, absolutely not because it gives us uh, physical health challenges, mm. it gives us emotional health challenges. And most of all, we are not able to resolve any, any problems in our life. We get mentally ill um, mm. and we, we are like always in chaos. There is so much hostility, negativity and aggression around us. That is, that is true. And exactly, it's like you're angry when there's something, ha it's a reaction, right, to something that happens. So when It's like a signal, it's like a red flag which is telling you, Stop, pause, try to understand what's the challenge, what's bothering you and resolve it. Yeah, go to the point, go to the initial point, the yes. nascent stage where it is all driving up because mm. and for that you need self-awareness a lot. Exactly. Because if you're not aware of your own self that okay, what do you like, what are your dislikes, what makes you angry, then you can never address this challenge. So in light of the teachings of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, because he has told us mm. how to spend our lives, how to deal with certain circumstances. So how did the Prophet, peace be upon him, uh, face situations where there was temperament issues or anger issues? We find out that uh, there is a narration, very beautiful narration in which the Prophet ﷺ said that the strong person is not the one who overpowers in wrestling but the strong person is the one who controls himself in the anger. Okay. So this is like you know something Strength. which is like you know we don't take things personally. Mm. 
I need to be like totally composed, totally in my best form and totally try to understand that what's the problem, what's the scenario, why I'm taking everything so personally. Mm. So I need to have that dynamic uh, aspects in my life where I can challenge myself, mm. I can challenge my beliefs, I can challenge uh, my reactions and I can learn from them. That's like an important thing that we understand. Another thing that we have to see like in Surah Ali Imran, verse number 134, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about those people. This is like a sandwich approach that have been given uh, related to anger. Says, Allazina yunfiquna fis sarra'i wal darra'i wal kazimin al ghais wal afina nin nas wallahu yuhibbul muhsineen. Like we get all the solutions in this. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, these are the people who spend freely in prosperity and adversity and they restrain their anger they, and they pardon all the people for Allah loves those people who are muhsin, who do the best of exemplary characters for something that they show. So it's like you need to have that giving nature, you need to have that abundant mentality. Mm. Unless you have that attitude, you are going to be angry on everyone mm. and for everything. Exactly. If you are so self-centered that you want things done your way, according to your own whims and desires or your own standards and principles obviously you won't be able to adjust other people around you mm. so you'll be creating your own problems yes that is true and in terms of behaviors mm. like uh, we know that if you're angry you should drink uh, some water that is an advice that is given to us hmm. and uh, if you're standing you should sit down, sit down. if you're sitting you're, you should lay down so in terms of these things in terms of Actually, when you're angry, when at a certain hmm. stage you're angry, what is the command being given to you at that certain stage? That's really interesting, Rida, because I have come across um, actually some practicing youngsters who have come to me and they said, oh, we read this hadith hmm. that you should say, Arzu billahi when you're angry, or if you're standing, you should be sitting or sitting to lie down, or you should uh, drink water. Hmm. But they're like, okay, ma'am, try to understand this scenario. I have a parent or a teacher standing in front of me and they are getting really angry and they are shouting and screaming at us and we are also in return getting extremely mm. upset. So if I start making all those gestures, I tell them wait a minute let me go and drink water or if I am standing I sit yeah. down, so that's going to create even more problems for yeah. me. So let's try to see how do we do it. Mm. Basically when we are angry it's not like a sudden thing which happens. Hmm. It's a build up. It's, it's a build up and we have certain sensations few minutes uh, to maybe a day or two earlier where you know you have this tightness in your jaw, you are irritable, you have this thinking pattern or you have sleep disturbance. There could be multiple things which could be affecting you. Hmm. So you need to pick those signals that hmm. they are leading me towards anger. And I can foresee that in a day or two, if something doesn't come out of it, mm. I don't look into this challenge properly, then I'm going to blast out. Okay, so the key is that self-awareness is basically the key to resolving anger issues. So that's the time when you need to start making your duas, your supplication. That's the time when you need to drink plenty of water. Mm. And remember this to be the sunnah way. Mm. And that's the time when you need to be having those postural changes. Because... I mean, you have seen people who say that since I'm very aggressive in nature, so I have joined a gym. Yeah. So I, I go You're on treadmill. And so the moment, you know, I, I get that energy out, so I feel relaxed. Mm. And there is also a fact to that because when we're more static, we have negative hormones and negative energy inside us. Mm. So the moment we become more physically active and obviously we're drinking ample amount of water, that's when our whole body system physically also starts settling down. Mm, interesting, very interesting. So we should basically, if we have, if we feel we mm. have the anger issues, we should probably think about ways of channeling it. Yes. And one of the ways is exercising. Yes. So exercising, yes, okay. So um, because we know that this anger thing is bad for the other person, but it does a lot of terrible things for you as well. Your mental health is affected, even your physical health is affected. So if we can laminate on that a little, that how impactful it is to be angry. Because the, you're hurting the other person with your anger, but you're also hurting yourself. Um, there are different types of anger, like you know, some people have chronic anger. 
Mm -hmm. So they have been carrying a lot of challenges from their childhood and onwards. And sometimes there are serious challenges like there could be cases of uh, abuses, sexual abuse as well, or domestic abuse, or there have been uh, times when you had been living in a dysfunctional family and you had not been treated well. Um, there could be other uh, things, areas where you, know, you have been badly affected and for all these times you had been resentful about them. Mm. So there are some people who have passive anger. Mm. So they're burning inside but uh, they seem apparently very cool. Then there are some people who have overwhelming kind of anger. Some people have self-inflicted anger and because of that we see a lot of people going in self-harm. Mm. You know, they torture themselves one way or the other. There is also a volatile kind of anger and then there is also judgmental kind of anger. Mm. So there is a big list of like you, how you can categorize. Mm. Then there's sometimes people who only are angry on themselves. Yeah. Sometimes there are other people who would be angry on others. Mm. They will see themselves as angels ah. and then there are people who are always angry on the world scenarios mm. where you feel so powerless and helpless that what am I supposed to do. Yeah. So because of that you can have uh, blood pressure, you can have cardiac problems, you can have digestive system problem, you can have insomnia where you're not able to sleep, there is a lot of anxiety. Um, then as I said um, people who are angry they make impulsive decisions. Exactly. They are not able to solve their problems. They take, they do things foolishly. Mm. They are so, sometimes they are embarrassed about, oh, how I behaved, yeah, how I shouted moment. in that moment because you, your actual intelligent brain is not working. Yeah, you are not actually your thinking. Whims and your response to yes. that scenario. And basically you are not considerate about the feelings of people around you. And later you could be saying sorry or you could be saying I have a lot of regrets. But it doesn't bring down back those moments. Yeah. What is done is done. Exactly. Whatever uh, a strong worded yeah. uh, argument that you've taken part in, you mm. can never go back. Yes. So it's best to, whenever you're angry, mm. you should just stop. You should not talk to anyone. I think that is very important. You should recollect your thoughts yes. and manage it in a way and communicate the message in an effective way, not in an angry way because then the other person is not even receiving that message. Do you agree with that? There, there are many ways in which we can uh, handle this anger. For one thing, we have to look at our own temperament. Okay. What is my temperament? Because some people who are already... Uh, more aggressive in nature. Mm -hmm. So it will be very easy for them to flare up on even a small, very trivial kind of issue. Mm -hmm. With other people uh, who could be more settled or they could be passive in nature, so they will be passive aggressive. Mm -hmm. you know, they, they will bottle everything Think inside and it. then they'll blast. Yeah. So um, when it comes to our anger management, the best people are who are assertive. Mm -hmm. So they can face their anger, they can address their anger, and at the very same time, they can also express their anger in the most dignified manner. I mean, I could be telling you I'm really upset and angry right now. Mm. But the way I say it is very, very important. Yeah. Because sometimes you have to communicate to other person that this thing is really upsetting me. Mm. And this thing is making me angry. This is what the companions of the Prophet ﷺ said that whenever they saw Prophet angry on something, they would see change of color on his face. Okay. Like it would turn red, mm. but he would be very cautious about what he says mm. or what he does. Yeah. So this is the behavior, this is the self-control that we need to have at that moment. Yeah, that is very important and uh, I feel the, uh, I feel if we build up that, mm. so we can actually escape from a lot of bad situations yeah. and a lot of regrets as well because exactly. when you're angry you say something and then you regret it later mm. because again like you said you're not using your intelligible brain you're just using your emotions and if you're communicating that in a negative form then the, your life will be full of regrets so it is important to channel all of that so uh, now I think we should move on to because this is an age of feminism and repeatedly we talk about toxic male masculinity and anger being associated with men and their uh, masculinity, how someone who is angry, angry young man, uh, we associate yeah. them as alpha male and somebody who's dom dominating, we idolize them, things like that, you know. Mm. So how important is it to uh, counter this narrative in the way that anger is not a healthy emotion. It is an important emotion, but how to channelize it is more important. I think for that we need to guide people towards reactive or proactive approach. Okay. Like we need to tell them that 
um, if you have anger and if you are expressing it in such a manner that you are saying the wrong things or um, your feelings are, actual feelings are paralyzed, uh, you are not able to express them properly or you are too frustrated and then you are too hurtful and total apathy towards other people. Mm. So that is something which is not appreciable. Mm. And then we need to tell them that what you need to do is be prepared for certain situations, then have a growth mindset, then you need to have calculated responses. Mm. And this is something, a concept that we need to pass on to the mothers because the more educated mothers are in this, that's when they will stop discriminating mm. about these emotions between the boys and the, and girls. the girls. Because sometimes in our society we tell the boys are allowed to feel in a certain way and the girls are not and vice versa. Mm. So we need to tell them that all these emotions are natural and they can become toxic when they go beyond a certain limit and what we need to do is address them all. Mm. And that's where the beauty of Islam is because Islam tells us that you have this feeling then channelize it, face it, try to understand what is the challenge. Mm, what is like the we, cause of it? Like we find out if you look at Umar Zilanho, mm. he had this anger uh, issue and uh, he, he had sort of an aggressive personality. But the moment he turned towards Islam, how he channelized it, we find out from one narration that the Prophet ﷺ looked at him and said, even shaitan is afraid of you. The moment he sees you on a certain path, he takes a turn another from there, path. he goes another, he takes another route and also we find out he had the best administration as a Khalifa when he was leading the world. Yeah. So that shows that you know people who have anger in them, if they channelize it properly, so they can be very productive mm. because they will have more assertive uh, traits in them mm. and they can be, this can be useful for them and for a lot of other people around. Mm. That is very interesting mm. because you're not saying that anger is a bad emotion, yeah. but how we express it is something that needs to be reconsidered. Yes. Right? Yes. Okay, so now uh, I think this is a very important question that I read somewhere mm. that during puberty, when a child hits puberty, yeah. they're going through a lot of hormonal changes yes, and physical are. changes and everything mm. like that. Mm. They tend to become more angry. Mm. And then the parents, they take that anger very personally. They're like, okay this kid has gone uh, astray and they're not obedient anymore yes. and they're angry all the time so what advice would you like to give parents who are going through that stage mm. and also the children on how to channelize their uh, changes in their bodies for most of the parents I tell them this is not your kid it's like you have to separate your kid from that emotion or that situation or that reaction you have to tell yourself this is my kid and I have made a lot of effort bringing them up grooming them so they're good kids Mm. but they're going through a bad phase they are on a roller coaster ride so I need to give them little space in this time I'm not saying that just let them be loose and create um, problems and crisis for themselves but just slow down with them try to understand where it's coming from because sometimes they'll burst out on even a very small, small challenge thing, a non-issue non-issue and to the kids I always tell them try to understand try to relate yourself to your emotion and uh, try to see, do some physical activity, do some healthy activities in your life, read something healthy because if you're going through that hormonal phase then you're constantly on your screen, mm. then you're constantly um, not disciplined in your lifestyle, yeah. in your eating, in your sleeping, so obviously everything is going to add up. Right. So that is something you have to streamline because one important area that the experts talk about over here is lifestyle change. Okay. Because the moment you work on these areas, it helps. And then there is a very beautiful narration from the Prophet. He said, uh, teach and make things easy and do not create difficulty. And when any one of you is angry, he should remain silent. Oh, silence. Yeah. And another important thing is like you teach them. You have to have teaching moments rather than sit with them and give them big lectures, lectures. on it's time to pray and it's time to sleep and it's time to get off screen. Yeah. You need to be very smart and very witty parents where you can talk to your kids, where you can communicate the right thing and at the very same time the kids understand in between the line that mm. now my parent is getting serious about it mm. and so I need to listen to them but giving them some due regard mm. in the process. Right. This is, uh, I think, very important message that can be taken from this because during that stage, I've seen a lot of relationships mm. go very badly because, you know, the 
switch of that moment because the parent is uh, very hurt by the behavior of their children and then you know it really affects them in the longer run as well so uh, in terms of having these anger issues in a family situation mm -hmm. if you're like with your husband or if you're with your siblings you know you have these issues how do you think is the best way to manage those kind of scenarios um, again I would go for lifestyle change okay um, for one thing you need to have sense of humor okay secondly uh, if you have a burnout you need to take a s some space you know you need to take some sort of exit from there it could be a physical exit like you can uh, communicate to your spouse that I'm upset about a certain thing I would like to talk to you mm. about it but not at this moment okay. because my hormones are driving me crazy, crazy or my anger is messing up with me mm. okay so you take that anger as your challenge rather than saying because of you I'm angry. Okay interesting. Yeah. Another important thing is that uh, you need to have positivity in your life if you're hanging around with people who are angry and um, they are again you know flaring you up that if, let's say there is a wife who is talking to a friend and saying oh my husband he doesn't have time for me or it could be a husband who's sitting in the office and is concerned and is talking to his colleague that I'm having so many challenges in my married life and if they're trying to calm them down because there is a lot of role played by other people in the game as well so if they are trying to calm them down obviously you know then the anger would be settling or they would be having other thoughts about it or they would be looking at some alternative but if there is someone who is adding up to that fuel so what will happen obviously you will be having a blasting attitude then communication is very important uh, usually people when they are angry or they are upset something is going against their own belief system their own value system their ideologies they go into extreme behaviors this is fight or flight so if you are in flight that then you usually go in silent mode or you could be in undertones in a very sarcastic manner like a sniper you're giving out your remarks or you're trying to express yourself that way which doesn't work which actually doesn't work and other people what they do is they go in fight mode they become aggressive they start shouting and sometimes people start actually physically hitting other people mm. so both these situations don't help so for husband wife and even in any situation what I would say is that you need to have some connection mm -hmm. where there is something between you that you can come to common ground you can talk to each other you can communicate in a healthy manner and if you're not able to do that you have to learn because the moment you start learning that's when things start getting better mm very interesting because uh, again communication is the key to yes, solving all those issues but I liked how you said that take anger as a challenge and not blame it on others that okay this person is making me angry this situation is making me angry what about that situation you need to explore because there will be difficult people in your life you cannot be angry all the so time. So that, that is why experts say that uh, the, use this formula A B C so okay. A is your activating agent or you call it a trigger okay. okay so you have to identify your own triggers like something on this table could be my trigger okay somebody at the door could be my trigger a certain relative could be my trigger mm. a certain remark could be my trigger mm. so I need to have a list of all those triggers okay then B is my belief system okay. how I talk to myself about that trigger because you cannot avoid those triggers those triggers are going to be there in your life 24 7 mm. but at the very same time because of those triggers we are also talking to ourselves 24 7 yeah. we, we talk very little with other people sometimes when we're angry we are quiet we are zipped up in front of other people and we are trying to say okay I will calm down I will calm down but the kind of conversation we are having with our own self it's like I hate this person I yeah. can't stand this person I They're feel so like unfair. slapping this person yeah. life is so unfair people are so unfair they all always brush everything around under the carpet or they misuse me so there's a big list of things which are again adding up inside us and ultimately C is your consequence mm. so you are going to then get so angry yeah. you will be not just angry you'll be furious something you would say you might regret later on mm. so what they say is experts that 
yes triggers are there yes there could be some people who would be you would be bugged by them or some people who would upset you but then you work on your self talk i'm not saying that you totally negate your self talk what you need to do is uh, address it you say okay yes i don't like this person this person hurt me uh, this situation is bad for me this is making me upset but you don't add very severe and very strong kind of comments uh, related to that trigger mm. so then yes you will be annoyed you might feel upset for a while but ultimately your emotions will start settling down mm. very interesting activating agent belief system and consequences, and consequences the abc's that is very very interesting because i believe that this is how we learn and this is these are the emotions if we know the steps that we need to take in order to make sure that we pacify a situation then that is uh, i think very important so um, like anger itself is an emotion that is real we cannot negate it we cannot take it out of our lives in a society that you feel i feel i personally feel is growing angrier and angrier by the minute yes. so what do you think are the best ways to pacify the situation if we talk about our society in general so in like today's society we need to just we need to just teach them okay like um we need like a lot of time when women come to me and they are discussing their challenges and most of them would say that i get so angry sometimes i'm angry on my husband my in-laws even my own kids my helpers at home and i don't want to get angry uh, that gives me a guilt and then a vicious cycle starts and i get even more angry on myself and then sometimes again i'm blasting out other people around me um so i tell i ask them that uh, have you ever read a book on anger management mm. or any article on anger management and they would give me this lost look mm. as if i'm talking in what? alien language <laughs> what is that <laughs> and then i asked them do you have a smartphone they are like yes i do do you have a social media account yes of course i do because i need to be connected to people so how come you are connected to people you are on social media allah has blessed you with everything but you're not reading about your actual challenges mm. so again you know it is time to address those challenges mm. it's time to learn about those challenges and i would also recommend that sometimes our elders what they say is gussa nahi karo don't get angry calm down don't do this and don't do that we need to give them some practical baby steps mm. so that they can reinforce the right concepts and they also learn what's the right path to take definitely and on the concluded note i would like to ask you a story of the prophet muhammad peace be upon him where he practiced a certain way or he behaved a certain way that helped him overcome a challenge overcome a situation that can you know we say lead by example so we look at our prophet peace be upon him and follow his example so a short story if you can tell us yes sure so i remember this very amazing incidents in which when the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he was in makka and he was trying to convey them about oneness of uh, god and the people were not actually paying any heed so he moved out of the city and he went to a close by town which is taif and people over there they were even more barbarous in their attitude mm. they they were hitting him with stones and Uh, they were putting all those thorns on the path so that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was actually bleeding mm. allah subhanahu wa taala sent down angels and the angels said that if you want we can crush these people between two mountains and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said no they are not aware of what they are doing so i want to give them this chance so this is an amazing incident exactly. amazing like you know the the way he managed himself because he was very heartbroken at that moment and imagine that he left the city thinking that they would be listening to him and he had to go back to the same people and he did understand now the mockery is going to even enhance mm. but subhanallah that's how kind he had been and that's how much his emotions were well managed oh wow that is actually a very inspiring story because i think that gives us as uh, followers of the great prophet peace be upon him a chance to actually uh, think about these things think about being the 
forgiving person, being dealing with anger in a way that is not uh, harmful for the other person. I think this is this is a great message, and this conversation was also very productive in the sense that we talked about the types of anger and how to channelize the, that negative emotion into something constructive. Because I think that is the way to a prosperous life. And you're given a thorn, you make something. When you're given a lemon, you get, make lemonade out of it. So that is, I think, the underlying message yes, of this indeed. entire conversation that we've had. It was a very pleasant conversation and I feel so enlightened every time I have sit across Dr. Kaval. So thank you so much for that as well. I hope uh, you as well as viewers, you feel that much enlightenment as well. And on that note, we'll conclude today's program that was on anger. If you have any questions, do reach out to us on social media. Till then, I bid you farewell. Allah Hafiz. <laughs> Leave us a